Hey guys, uh, another video here this week. Uh, we did lose to AIOU uh, last week, and uh, I don't think I should make a video when we lose because I wouldn't want to give you bad strategies. Hopefully we'll face them in playoffs and uh, be able to correct the mistakes we made in the match we played earlier against them, but you never know, they're a good team, so uh, credit to them. This is Infamous versus Squirtle Squad, and we played uh, two very fast rounds against them. This is the first round. And uh, I had a really fun time playing them. Uh, it's actually, this this is just the offensive round. I just wanted to do the one round because it really uh, exemplifies, as a spy, the range of what you can do. Sometimes you're expected to go after the medic. Sometimes you want to play flank. Sometimes you want to do other stuff. In this particular map, I, didn't, I don't think I killed a single person in this entire offensive round. Yet we got a five-minute time in our first round. And that's generally because... Uh, the strategy that they enabled uh, was a very passive one. The enemy team decided to hold back and stay away from the cart. So I was able to use that against them by dead ringing, using the dead ringer on the cart and making them overextend into the cart or give up tons of ground. They had to choose one or the other. A lot of times, you see right here, the heavy, I can't even do anything in the tunnel right now. They are just being totally passive. They are not trying anything, they're just holding this tunnel, right? So. For me as a spy, why would I run into that? Why would I try and get a pick in situations where they are just constantly spy checking? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Uh, the best thing I can do is try and play away from the combo and instead focus on the objective. The objective being the card. And there you saw I denied the scout a health pack. I guess I was responsible for part of that kill, so that was good. But it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I see them in the tunnel, so I don't think there's anyone upstairs. And so I'm just going through. And what I'll find is that there's actually the entire combos here. They moved the sentry gun to second, and they've abandoned tunnel for some reason. We didn't have any picks on them. They were like a full team, and they just decided to get out of tunnel. So that was their decision. I don't think it really made much sense at all. It didn't really delay us at all. Uh, and so when I see that, I say, okay, I'm going straight dead ringer. Because that sentry position they have in the upper left-hand corner, we had played it earlier. Uh, Dream Killers had used it against us, and I found that I could not get anywhere near that sentry gun. So if you can't do something, if there's no way to actually infiltrate the enemy team, you should do what you can. And what I can do here is push the cart. That means the scout doesn't have to push the cart. It also means that the best pl player in the game is pushing the cart because the dead ringer allows you to get multiple lives and you get faster ammo back while you're on the cart. And you can see here, they have to really, it's a very wide open area on this map. And it makes it very, very good to actually do this because they can't cover all the flanks. And if they can't cover all the flanks, they're gonna be constantly distracted and not focused on the cart, which means that going dead ringer in the cart even though it looks really silly and it can it can be stupid if your team can't give pressure uh is actually very effective for in my case because my team is constantly applying pressure and by going on the cart here we're forcing people to come down to get out of their positions so anyway uh here we're just pushing through um again we've gotten a few kills i'm not exactly sure who's up who's down right now kind of lost track of that but I'm just staying on the cart and doing all the dirty work for my team because I know I'm pretty safe. Uh, a few other people might be on it right now. I, again, uh, they have to stop me. I don't, I don't need to do anything about that sentry gun. I can just avoid it. Like, see, the sentry gun cannot cover the point without a wrangler up, and then that presents other problems because the NG has to focus on me and not focus on uh, the uh, what's around him, so he can get bombed or other things like that. So there, we got third for free just because I was on the cart constantly taking damage and refilling on it as well so anyway uh, we're just pushing through here uh, not much to see again I haven't killed a single person yet I've wounded a scout but uh, by being on this cart and being an annoying distraction it's my belief that my team got at least a few picks because they're focused on the cart and they're not focused on my teammates who are holding a better position like no one wants to be behind a cart not seeing uh, what they can do or what they can't do and you can see here here is a wide open space, and this is what makes it so good to do Dead Ringer on this map because they have to cover so much ground, which allows our sniper Leaky to get a lot of picks if he, if he, you know, if they try and overextend into him because there's so much open space here. On other maps, it might not be as good to use this strategy, but here, again, they're focused on other things. You know, again, our soldiers distracting, everybody else is distracting, and I can just keep uh, hammering this card because they are a very passive team when it comes to holding. They have a set strategy. We're going to stay in the sentry gun. We're going to hold this particular area. The issue is they have a lot of area they need to cover. 
and they weren't able to successfully defend this huge area. So as a spy, you gotta always be looking for like little things you can do because I found that I was being very ineffective in some of my scrims against the better teams. Against some of the worst teams, it was could be more of a DM fest, but against some of the better teams, you need to figure out a way to out strategize them. And here, I mean, they were not able to deal with this at all. You can see I've pushed third, pushed fourth, and I'm going into last without dying. I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous. And this is the fastest time I've ever gotten on Smith Water. I knew this spy was going to decloak there, and it was just, um, I'm hoping my team puts pressure. I'm telling them to pressure the card. I get it even further. I get it almost all the way in there. And now I see the writing on the wall. I just should just go cloak and dagger because they're not, they, ex they see me go dead ringer the entire match, and now they can't do anything about cloak and dagger if they don't expect it, right? So I just need to decloak on the card at the perfect time and cap it. And then we get a time that they can't do anything about because their spy is not going to be doing this shit, uh, generally. I mean, and, I, and even if he is, I'm going to be defending against it because I know how to defend against this kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of teams don't because no one really does it. Um, but anyway, it was a very fun match. I just wanted to kind of show you, like, you may not have stats in a match, but that doesn't mean you're not being effective. You can be giving assist to your team. You can be helping them push the cart. You can be creating distractions, and that stuff's not going to show up on TF logs or whatever, you know? It's not going to show up, but you could be an in instrumental part in the time. And you got to be, you got to decide to yourself whether you want to be a selfish spy or you want to be a spy that helps your team win. Uh, so anyway, it was a very fun match, and they were a very good team. They actually had a very good offensive time in the next one. But I, I just wanted to cover this small little thing. So uh, thanks for uh, listening, guys, and watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.